I know what you're thinking is a new year, new year, new me, new show, new programming. And yes, we are doing it better this year because last year we on a sour note. Last year, we let somebody manipulate us into watching Police Academy, seven terrible movies. And they all said, how the hell are we going to get right back on track? I said, I got you. And we're going to talk about some Star Trek. And we're going to start off with Star Trek, the motion picture. Looking forward to this. Stay tuned to us. You're watching a popular review. Welcome back. I am the exec consultant, and I picked this franchise because not just because it's like my favorite franchise, not just because it's such an influential part of my life. It's because I wanted to make sure that all y'all enjoyed the ride with me from Star Trek the Motion Picture all the way over to Star Trek Nemesis. Great, great franchise. And then we're going to do a couple spinoffs known as Space Journey, but we'll talk about that when we get down there, that ride, um, line. But let's go ahead and bring on my co host and we're going to start off with a Carmen life form. This is the guy responsible for all you all leaving us last year because he has watching Police Academy. What's going on? People didn't leave us. People didn't leave us. Stop hating. Stop hating. Police Academy was, was terrible. a good franchise. It was okay? horrible. Listen, at least they went out in the streets. They didn't just run around in a ship looking for a bunch of stars. All right? So shoe fly with your hate. Anyway. Happy Let's go ahead and bring on the next host. <laughs> this person is straight from uh, Vulcan. He, I guess he was trying to do his culinary and didn't work out. So, but he's here now. Let's bring on, as I drop remote controls, which is Spock. Ooh. Yes, I was doing my culinary in my kitchen, thinking about my culinary. That's, culinary. that's the doctor's job. Anyway, that's culinary. If you, if you get, that's what I, don't mess up the joke, Chris. Right. All right. Yeah. It's good I to see you, Vic, again. Thank you, Vic. Uh, I like your background, bro. Year. Uh, I, like I see you background. blending into your background. You're in New York. Yeah, yeah. you already. Um, I was thinking about Vic earlier, ladies and gentlemen. He had a picture of himself up in Paris, and then I started thinking about Kanye West songs. And <laughs> but it's good to be on the show, even though spoiler alert: one of these movies is my favorite in the series that we're doing in Star Trek. Mm. Well, continue on bringing on the next co host, which is none other. He didn't change his name, he didn't want to be Carbon Life Form, he didn't want to be Mr. Spock. He wanted to be hardcore. Is your mother? I bring to you, Mr. Mike Fox. What's going on, everybody? What, what's what's up? Hey, man. Sound of soft core, there, not hardcore. Right. Uh, well, good to hear you know, from you. Uh, well, sometimes soft soft core is better than you know. You know, you know, it's always got to be hard. But I was this close, man. <laughs> this close. Yeah, this part out. Literally, as I thought you couldn't hear me, I was saying I was gone. <laughs> <laughs> so we need to get this ball rolling. I have uh, been called you out and i was like saying mike 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 and you were just like staring and uh uh our fourth co-host now has disappeared but she did say that her internet was janky well we wait for her let's go ahead and continue on with the show and we're going to start by star trek the motion picture it's a movie that's based on well the continuation so to speak of the semi-popular 1960 series uh on nbc and I think Decker is back. If she is back, she'll give you a thumbs up. Are you are you back, Decker? Are you ready to go? Let's bring her in. Decker doesn't look as uh, upset as <laughs> one captain or exec Decker from Star Trek, the motion picture. What's going on with you, E? Um, I'm great. How are you? I'm doing fantastic, wonderful, and excellent at the same time because I'm in the Star Trek franchise and coming off. After Police Academy, I am very, very happy. How do we go from the Rocky franchise to the Police Academy franchise? It's just, it was just a hard drop. But now we're back up here with Star Trek and uh, Carbon Lifeform. We're going to begin with you. Uh, with some of your thoughts when it comes to this movie. All right. Um, well, the problem that I had with it was the fact that I had no idea what the hell was going on. <laughs> Why did I not? have an idea what the what the hell was going on because i never saw the show so what happened as i was watching this movie i was seeking references and you know a lot of references from things that i've heard throughout the years and things like that so for example when spock showed up and it was this big dramatic moment of two people that haven't seen each other in a really long time and they're very happy to see each other and da 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 
I had no clue what the hell was going on because I never saw the show. This movie was set up like the Power Rangers movie, where in order to know what's going on, you had to watch the show. Or like, um, you know, just something that's just a continuation of something else. It's Star Trek, the motion picture. So you go into this knowing who the people are. Watching it back, I don't know who the fucking people are. Why? Because, number one, I didn't live around, the t- I wasn't, I wasn't around when the TV show came out. And number two, um, I was never culturized into it. I'm a first generation American. I only noticed this on reruns and things like that. So it was never a situation where like I could watch it back from the beginning. Now seeing this movie, I'm curious to see if there's a possibility of watching it back and then understanding all of these cultural references. Now, with that being said, the fact that the movie came out in the mid to late 60s, um, it's very telling of that time. I live by where the World's Fair used to be. The World's Fair is all about peace through understanding, the future, the this, the that, where, you know, it's all back to the future type stuff. So for that time, this stuff right here was awesome. Looking back at it now with 2022 eyes, it's hilarious, you know, because it's like taking one of those rides at Disney World where the moon, room moves and then you just have these stars all over the place. So it's like the production value is kind of cute and you see like nuts and bolts and shit everywhere. So <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's interesting, you know what I mean? But then at the same time, like when you go through the movie, because I mean, here's the other thing I noticed. Our level of like paying attention and using our imagination has just gone down over the years because like you really have to pay attention to know what's going on in this movie. You really had to like really sit there and use your imagination and pay attention in order to be entertained as long, you know, but especially once you start realizing who the characters were and what this whole thing is about. So, um, yeah, I mean, I have mixed feelings, honestly. I really do. I have mixed feelings about this because it was all over the place and I was just trying to figure this out. But the one thing that I never understood that I do understand <laughs> now is that this whole thing is just about like humanism. Just people running around the different planets and seeking out different things and then Spock is going to come at the end with the banger quote. I want to see, I just want to see the other movies for the banger quotes because I know that Spock is coming with the quote because everybody likes Spock and now everybody didn't stop shutting about shutting up about Spock for the past 40 years. So now I want to see the other movies and just for that. But other than that, if you don't know who the characters are, it's boring as hell. All right. Uh, Decker, you're a little muted down there. It seems like you want to say something. Go ahead and speak your mind when it comes to this great classic of a movie. I don't want to cut nobody off, but Wow. I mean, I'm taken aback by your commentary. Um, I had had probably watched six episodes of the original series, um, but I did watch the uh, later iterations of the films. So I was familiar with some of the supporting cast. Obviously, Leonard Nimoy, right? Everybody knows, can recognize that guy. But um, the I'm talking like Scotty, I'm talking Bones, like, you know, Every, everyone black also knows Uhura. 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 Um, but yeah, I'm surprised to hear that. Uh, I, I thought this was um, a visual masterpiece. Um, I, there were often these long shots with multiple angles, very strategic lighting, um, very strategic and precise use of green screen. Um, I, I thought this was a really beautiful film. I thought uh, init- I thought going into it that it was going to be really you know cheesy and uh, easy to see the fishing line and all of that type of thing, but it really wasn't that. It was a gorgeous film. Um, even the lighting of the characters, whenever someone would have dialogue or anything like that, the makeup, there was a lot of it, <laughs> but the makeup was particularly good. Um, I kind of loved everything about this movie. I hate to jump to the final thoughts, but <laughs> it, it was a really good movie. The, the costumes. 
I'm just I, a. I, I can't. I can't um, hold them on this one. This is a legacy that I'm very invested in. Can't wait to see the other films. Um, but this one in particular, like Ilya, when she goes through her drag transformation and comes back aboard with those pumps, the clear <laughs> stripper heel <laughs> sandal, and this, you know almost see your coochie coo robe like i was really living this was my kind of movie i really enjoyed this um so yeah that's it don't mean to go out of order sorry no nah, it's fine i know we're supposed to go in a certain order uh that was really <clears throat> on the last show that we did we'll do that on the next one with mike not so you can just go ahead and hop in there for me i, I i'm with uh miss decker here as far as uh carbon life form like yeah how you all the things you watch you've never watched star trek it's just that's just you know you know, you know what it is? I'll, I'll put it like this you see how there's people that don't know who jimmy the i mean uh steamboat is right i'm just gonna say steamboat right? well ricky steamboat's not as big as not knowing who hulk hogan no, is though exactly. there's a different but star no, trek is just as big as anything in american is, pop culture my point is is just that like you have to you can notice it but mm -hmm. never be into it like look no, I, I get that I you didn't say that you didn't say you went into it I, you said I never see, saw an episode i never <laughs> saw star wars until i joined this group well okay because well, it, again, never, because it never it never it never really like jumped out at me <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I never saw very specific types of nerdism that I never everyone saw. doesn't get down. No, there. no, I, 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 I never. never when I say people, I'm not talking about random other people. I'm talking about me knowing you. I would have thought you've watched Star yeah. Trek. Yeah, that, that, no, that's 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 I get it. That because it's full of tech shit. I understand. Right. Yeah, right. I get but, that. I just when I was younger, I was just. I always felt like it's gonna take too long to understand what the hell's going on. No, uh, I, I, I totally get you. Reason, I, just like Game of Thrones. I'm a little a surprised about, about Star Wars, though, because you love politics, and that's kind of Star Wars' whole thing, but like with you see, you know, know, obvious, what, the obvious layer of science fiction with it. It's, it's, not, it's not that I love politics. It's that politics is based on reality. I'm not going to say politics love me. That's, politics, <laughs> no, politics, that's what he should have said, because no matter what movie, we would talk about Little no Mermaid. We no, talk about Star Wars. Fun, we like, talk... We talk about the, the um, 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 Bats, Avengers. Bats Everything politics goes in. back to politics for carbon life form. No, it's think not it's that. a Reagan era. It Everything is. is capitalism. I don't know. But you know what it's I not. do know, carbon no, life form? Right I know that Mike Fox was either. talking. And I really want to hear his opinion on Star Trek. But for some reason, <laughs> I'm going we got to continue what you that's that's it, it was led there and it's who we're talking to and i've been that now he disappeared so, again go ahead while you that, that's the magic of star trek um growing <laughs> up i hated I up hated 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 star trek Ooh. it was the bane of my existence i had uncles from vietnam and i had uncles from prison and all they watched was andy griffin hogan's heroes doctor who and star trek <laughs> and it was either watch that all the time or guess what guys go watch one life to live in general hospital with grown people having imaginary sex on tv i chose the soap opera world okay but i still have known these things and watched these people. things and just never been a fan have always been a fan of star wars over star trek with all that being said as as, as my interview to this movie which i had to be forced to watch i have to be honest here Halfway through the movie, I called Chris and said, I love this movie. Like, I, I'm watching this film and, and everything like Decker says, the, the special effects at this time, when this movie came out, I think it came out, what, 70, 79? 70, so I'm like four years old when this movie comes out. Um, you got Captain Kirk, you got Spock, you got Aurora, you got what this show is known for. As an adult, I can appreciate it now of what my uncles and them were watching. Because there's certain things as a child I watch, and I may have enjoyed Night Court and Cheers. I watch those older shows now. They're completely way different, and I understand the content now. So watching Star Trek, I, I was in love, and I couldn't wait to get through this movie to watch the second movie like you as well, Carbon Life Form. But the, the thing is, and what we're viewing is Star Trek The Motion Picture. So was it a thumbs up or a thumbs down? Kind of because what I like, how did the movie flow? I'll tell you that part when we have our final thoughts. I think it's uh 
Mr. Spock's turn. He's waiting there patiently in the deck. Um, should have had your screen sideways like you were getting attacked. I've always thought that was a good thing about Star Trek, too. It was like those shows back in those days, like they're just lame. <laughs> they just fall back on the other side of the screen. You no, know, shout out to what was her name, Ella, or whatever her name is. Because during the wormhole scene, whatever. During the wormhole scene, she she acted way over, she overdid her acting. I'm sorry. Oh, and, and even that part, real fast before Spock go with um the lady who she's going through her transformation. That whole thing was just hilarious. And and, and that's sci-fi. And and I just couldn't believe as a child. Yeah, that's definitely what they did. Oh, it's trouble. <laughs> it's trouble. <laughs> The RBX theaters have those. Object is an asteroid. When their faces had to like the, they just they just mess up the the film and had like a prism of their screen flying through the screen, and mm -hmm. they were like you know, that 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 whole thing to me was just it was it was good, but was the movie good? I want to wait for that a little longer. Go ahead, Mr. Spock. Uh, let me first say that uh, listening to Vic describe this movie is to me what <laughs> Star Trek the motion picture was to Vic. What's going on here? I don't understand. <laughs> Someone please help. But enough about that. Chris, <laughs> please, before the end of the show, could you recreate Ilea's journey through the world? <laughs> you know, because even when they were finished with the wormhole, she still was doing it. I was like, no. <laughs> Everybody else was on a gimbal. Their gimbal stopped, but she's trying to get the nomination. Okay? So shout, shout out to Ilea. Because you cracking me up. Um, let me just say this, that if you didn't grow up with Star Trek, uh, I don't know how it would come off to you. I think that the movie explained it rather well as far as what's going on. I mean, when I first saw the first Avatar, um, I've never seen the Navi before, but I just paid attention to the dialogue. And what do you know? I understood what was going on in the movie. So I think that's how all movies or well-constructed movies are supposed to operate. But... So you're talking I mean, about the blue people? Avatar, yes. Oh, okay, no, that's Avatar's Aang. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Just have to get oh, that part. Uh, to each their own, <laughs> right? But uh, Star Trek The Motion Picture, I think, and this is a little deep cut, if you're familiar with Star Trek The Next Generation and the whole backstory of how that came to be, this motion picture, the first one in the series of Star Trek films, really plays as a transitionary film, right? Originally, it wasn't even going to be a motion picture. It was going to be Star Trek Phase Two, and that was going to be a television program. And then Star Wars comes out in 77. And so Paramount is like, let's get on this. We can get some money and everything like that. And so they make a motion picture. That's why the budget is so uh, so high compared to the other films. To E's point, that's why it looks so good. Then you have Roddenberry, who still hasn't been pushed out the door. He still has a lot of creative control. He wasn't the director, but you can see his hand in it. And so when you have all those gorgeous shots that he's talking about and the lighting is just right and the ship is there and you can hear Roddenberry. If you listen closely, you can hear Roddenberry in the background with the lotion. <laughs> you know, it's because he's just going. To, this is the budget that he wanted when he was doing this television show back in the 60s. So all the ideas that he had in his head for the past 10 years. Right. They put it on the screen. And as a result of that, by the time you get to the sequel, they're like, Roddenberry, you can be a executive or a creative consultant. You can come into when we're filming it, but you really have no say because he kind of went overboard and you can see that. And so, again, I go back to the point that it's more of a transitionary film. I think that there is a storyline in there, specifically when you see uh well, he was Captain Decker. He then demoted to Commander Decker for the duration of the mission. He's actually the son of Commodore Decker. That's a deep cut if you know the original series. His father, <laughs> Kirk actually killed his father, and then he took his son's ship, you know what I mean, after giving him a promotion. Kirk is not done well in this movie, right? And again, when we Damn get it, I need you. <laughs> yeah, I that need was you. gay. I love that. That was a good line. Um, that is a but good when you line. get to Wrath of Khan and there's a scene that he has with Spock, you see how the interplay between those two is different. And you really see if we're to take both of them as canon and 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 that's how Kirk really treated the situation. You see that he has no respect for one, but has the ultimate respect for the other. And so it's a great character development in the later films. And I really wish that there was more of that in there. There's touches of that. But again, I think and I don't want to put the full blame on it because Roddenberry kind of made this movie a hard sci-fi 
as opposed to uh, science fiction, action adventure, you know, Bonanza in outer space, which is what the original was sold at, the original series was sold as. This one is more like a hard R, more like a Dune. Um, and if you read science fiction, you know the difference between just sci-fi and hard science fiction, where they're trying to explain the tech manuals and how everything runs. You don't really care about that. Star Wars is they have the technology and they just go, right? But in this movie, they're really going into two different places, and it's very much like Encounter at Firepoint. And a lot of these are deep cuts for people who are fans of the show and have watched the series. They'll really understand what I'm saying. But when you get more into the other series, especially the second one, you really see how it becomes more of a character dynamic. And that, ironically, is, even though Roddenberry didn't have more control on that, it's closer to what the original series was, which was all about character and human development. And so that's my preliminary thought on uh, motion picture. All right. And mine, because I don't think I ever said mine, I just want to get my favorite scene and then we're going to cut the commercial. My favorite scene actually is when Kirk and, and Scotty are riding around the Enterprise in that long journey, right? And I say it was long because it was like one of Vic's soliloquies. It was just long and long and long just to get to the ship. It's amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, find out where we're reviewing up this upcoming Tuesday as well as the next one in this series. Stay with us. You're watching a popular review. What did we just do? Vacation friends? Yes. Why does the salt not taste salty? Oh, because it's cocaine. What? We actually brought it from home. Very, very easy if you ever want to try it. It's just a Ziploc and a full shampoo bottle. And it's so much more comfortable than when I had it in my ass. Mm. Everywhere they go. Fuck you, you baby face little bitch! Chaos happens. This weekend is all about you. Well, I like the sound of that. We do too. Jesus. Good evening, everyone. What is he doing up there? Marcus and I cross paths in Mexico. Get to know each other intimately. This is the best wedding I've ever been to. Most potent magic mushroom on earth. I ate it. Why? You told me to. I didn't say eat it. Man, everything you touch, turn into drugs. Beyond the darkness, beyond the human evolution, is Khan. I've done far worse than kill you. I've hurt you. And I wish to go on hurting you. I shall leave you as you left me, marooned for all eternity, buried alive, buried alive. Sean! Sean! Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. The next movie in this series is Star Trek II, Wrath of Khan, very popular one in the Star Trek franchise coming out to you next Thursday, and of course, come, this upcoming Tuesday, we have Vacation Friends, which continues our Hulu uh, movie for this month, uh, going into our next month, which will be musicals. Looking forward to that one. But ladies and gentlemen, we'll talk about Star Trek, the motion picture right here, Zach and Sultan, Carmen Life for Mr. Spock, Decker, and Mike Knox. And we're going to get into our final thoughts, thumbs up, thumbs down. And it was going to start with Carmen Life for him over there, but it looked like he got up and uh, left. I guess that's his thumbs Guys, down. Guys, can you see me? Can you hear me? I can see you. I hear you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. It was saying my connection was janky. Uh, Vic, can you hear us? Yeah. And we're going to start off with Vic with his thumbs up, thumbs down, five thoughts. Go ahead, Vic. It's on you. Uh, well, like I said before, I never saw this stuff. I just heard about it through the grapevine. Um, and I never, I never took the chance to actually take to take the time to watch it, uh, because I always felt like it was going to take too much time. So I never knew the references. I never knew any of that stuff. So I spent today pretty much just looking at it and trying to figure out what was what, who was who, and just looking at the production value. Now, because of the time that when it was made, um, I thought that everything looked good. As far as, I mean, one thing I really liked was like when they were zooming through the black hole and everybody's face was just stretched out. I thought that was interesting. I really wanted to see how they did that <laughs> back in the 60s. You know what I mean? Like, I, I thought that that part of it was, was interesting. But like, you know, the bottom line is, is that it's a niche market. So if you care about it, um, it's good. Like, it's going gonna, it's gonna to make money. Like, I'm, I bought, like I said before, Spock came through. 
the banger quotes. I want to see some more. So I'm just curious. I'm probably going to Google something that says spot quotes. You know what I mean? Because I got a feeling like this guy has got a lot of um, wisdom. Bars. Yeah, he comes across as like Paul Heyman type wise man. You know what I mean? So like, I'm curious to see what what more is around. I uh, missed a spot. Oh, thumbs up. Thumbs up. Sorry. Yeah, thumbs up. Yeah, sorry. Thumbs up for you. All right, Mr. Spock, thumbs up, thumbs down, final thoughts. <clears throat> again, uh, well, let me just say thumbs up to answer the question. Uh, again, I think this story is better served in the sequel. There are great aspects of this film that I like. It's beautiful. I love, again, um, <clears throat> when Bones returns to the ship, I love how uh, we see that Kirk is over his head. And even though he won't admit it to Decker, he by bringing on his crew, his um, his the trio of them of Spock, Bones, and McCoy. That's where he feels safe. He doesn't know the ship; it's a refit of the Enterprise. He doesn't know what's going on because they've never encountered this. The Federation hasn't encountered Vija before. He's in over his head, and he can't bring himself to admit it. We'll see that again very shortly. Hint, hint, hint. But I love the introduction of the different characters. And we can see, especially if you know them from when we last saw them in TOS, that they have lived. They, Bones looks completely different. I don't just mean because he has the beard, but clearly he's been doing something else. We see Spock has been doing something else. They've all had lives in the interim of the 10 years spanning between 68 and 79 when this movie came out. Obviously, in their time, it's different. But I love that because it's a little bit of world building in such a short amount of time. Again, uh, a thumbs up. Decker, what you got? Um, I really enjoyed this film. I thought the writing was really good. I really loved the visual effects, definitely. But the score, the super dramatic scenes, the dramatic dialogue. Um, I mentioned it earlier in the show, but that I need you. A man say that to me, he, I'm gonna have his babies. That was some serious game from Captain Kirk, as far as I'm concerned. And I'm, you know, impressed, you know? Um, definitely feeling his arm hair too. Y'all know how I feel about fur. And I, this was just an excellent, excellent film. Super exciting start to a franchise. I think one of the most excited I've been other than Mission Impossible. Um, stream Mission Impossible, UPRE review. Um, but yeah, it, it it was excellent. I loved it. Um, especially loved the giant cosmic butthole. So weird and obvious and on the nose, but cool and hard science. It's a thumbs up for me. All right, and then we're going to Mr. Mike Knox. Um, this movie was just, it was just good. Um, I I like the things that Spock really touched on, you know, piggybacking off of Decker, the, the lighting. That was one of the things I wanted to point out, just watching certain scenes when you first see the, 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 the new Enterprise or the ship they used that came out, just how it looked. Everything looked, it looked better than it looked at, to me as a TV show. And again, knowing now what I didn't know then, you could see the budget that was spent to make it look like this big sci-fi movie. Like you said, Star Wars had already come out at this point. So um, Paramount and just learning what I've learned about Paramount, watching the, the show called The Offer on Paramount Plus, you get a chance to check it out where they talk about how The Godfather was put together. Um, you see what kind of toll moral and how they would play with money back in that time. And um seeing this film and just seeing like you said the special effects and just the, the story is what really got me the special effects okay it's it's baiting the 70s i'm not going to feel it today you know compared to other things but it was the story it was the acting it was for the first time i saw what the world saw in captain kurt she's saying you know uh the line she's about you know have her babies but you know kurt if you know anything about captain kurt was that player guy like that's what to this day he still plays off of that image of um, this cool guy, you know what I mean, that can get laid when I want to. And um, just like I said, watching this movie and seeing the progression of this movie and learning what I know now about films, 
this was called the motion picture for a reason because this was you could see this was going to be set up for more to come and they knew that if it hit well they could do more things and and we get that with the star trek to the wrath of Khan. so for me as always i don't even know why i went that far it's a thumbs up for me uh negative this also all right this movie was visually stunning this movie was great in so many ways but the movie was boring as hell. I can't stand it. I, can't, I see this movie so many times that I, I hate the fact that I only watch it just because I'm doing a marathon of Star Trek. Otherwise, now I'll skip this movie every single time. It puts me to sleep. I was watching it with my friend because she wanted to watch it with me. And I'm like, oh, you don't really have to watch it. And I was like, okay, fine. But I'm telling you, it's boring as freak. This movie gets a thumbs down for me. It, I swear I'm so glad that this was not the catalyst for me watching Star Trek because if it was the catalyst for me watching Star Trek, I probably wouldn't be a Trekkie that I am today. It was that bad to me. Can't stand it. Thumbs down. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching this. Here at Unpopular Review for this uh, movie, make sure that you pay attention to us on Tuesday as well as Wednesday. We had some one shots coming up. Uh, so looking forward to that and everything. Like, share, subscribe to us here at Unpopular Review Entertainment, Unpopular Review Wrestling, and all the other things we have going on here at Unpopular Review for Carbon Life former Mr. Spock for Jack Herbert for Mr. Mike Knox. I'm Ezek Consultant. We'll see you right here next time on a popular review. Good day, everybody.